So thank you very much, and let's go on with the program. And give Thomas Eckner the mic to present his keynote. but deals with creating the content for the portal. So it's the distinct target of this project not to create new portals, but content for portals like the Arcas Portal Europe or the Europeana or national portals. And on the other hand, this project deals with the cooperation behind building infrastructure and building content. It deals with the exchange of experience, of knowledge, with uh, enabling meetings for archivists. And one crucial program in the project is our mobility grant program. Because we all face in our public administrations uh, restrictions of budgets, restrictions of money, especially for travel. Very often it's very hard to explain why to travel to another country. And therefore we have the mobility grant program. The target of this program is to enable all archivists from Europe to cross the border, to get in touch with colleagues in other parts of, of Europe, to create an exchange, to create, but also to create new ideas, new visions on how and into which direction archives might go in the future. And another part of the project is the educational part. And uh, the educational program um, is carried out by the Scuola Normale Superiore di Pisa. Uh, it's the partner who is responsible for that. It's some kind of it's something like a work package leader in the Apex project. And uh, this workshop today is some kind of joining the forces of the two projects of ENAC and Apex. So. The ENAC project provides the place, provides the money for traveling, provides the money for the dinner or something like that. It creates the frame for it and now uh, the APEX project can uh, start building a community of country managers, which is from my experience coming from ICARUS a crucial point inside the APEX project building a community of country managers, building a community of people sharing a vision, sharing a perspective uh, which does not stop at the border of your own country. And therefore I would like to give you some aspects, some topics on what we are dealing in general if we talk about building portals or if we talk about cooperating between archivists. Maybe some things I will tell you now are very, appear very obvious and you, you think, okay, I know that. But I think it's very important having these aspects in mind if we talk about building a portal like the Apex, uh, the Arcas Portal Europe. And a project like the Arcas Portal Europe or also the ENAC project, is always something like a journey to the unknown. Of course, we have the description of work in the Arcas Portal Europe project, as also in our ENAC project as well, but there are always new issues and new challenges 
within the process of a, of a project. And there are always new aspects, new obstacles, new things we have to face, we have to deal with, we hadn't expected before. And it's very important being prepared for that during the process of the project. And if we talk about a project like dealing with building portals for archives, I think it really is an exciting journey. And I really can, it's my, I'm uh, deeply convinced that never before in history it has been so excited being an, uh, exciting being an archivist and carrying out projects like we do at the moment. Never before we had those possibilities to reach so many people all over the world, to share the information we store in our archives with the whole mankind. And if we talk about archives in the digital era, or archives using information technologies, there is one thing we really have to consider also compared to libraries. I know you know all that, but um, you know that archives store unique information in unique places. Okay, it's obvious, but never before it has been possible to share that unique information with so, with so, so many people. Never before in history. If we talk about libraries with printed books, they had Gutenberg, they had, uh, they had some revolutions, but the real information revolution now is going on in the archives. <clears throat> it can also be said that, um, to be honest, uh, information stored in an archive is something like um, something basically something restricted because you need to get to a certain place to access the information. So the accessibility of archival information basically is physically restricted. But the content of the information has many links to many persons, to many other information sources in libraries, in museums, in other archives. Um, which we would not know without the possibility of information technologies. And so the content stored in the archives, the information stored in the archive, has a huge possibility to be linked with any information in any other archive, museum, or library, or also in private uh, holdings. I think it's also important not just to think in the institutional way. I think it's also very important to think uh, also in a way to involve the wide public into what we do and also into providing and sharing information because not only institutions have archival holdings, also private persons have very precious holdings that could be of value for research and access in general. So we know um, that sharing information by copying it by hand or by printing it since the 15th century were real good ways to share information and were important for the libraries especially, but for the archives with the unique objects uh, uh, less. But now the information technologies uh, bring the real, the real revolution for the archives, as I already said. And I think the process we are facing now can be compared to something like Finally, the information stored in our archive <coughs> is freed, gets freedom, and can be spread all over the world. 
And I think that's a unique fact, especially for us in the archives. With many, many consequences, we now at the moment do not know. So we are on a journey into an unknown land. We do not know where it leads to, but it's an exciting journey. I'd like also to stress another aspect. Um, the information stored in archives can be basically called as something like a part of the memory, the historical memory of mankind. If we talk about things like memory, so if we talk the memory of a man or a woman, so you have your memory everywhere with you. You can access your memories everywhere in the world where you have your, your body and your brain with you. And isn't it a little bit curious that uh, a very important part of the historical memory of mankind has been or still is only accessible for a minority of people? Let's be honest, uh, physical archives uh, are not accessible for many people. They are just for a minority of people, mostly researchers, mostly genealogists, mostly uh, local research, uh, people who do local history. But basically, um, the archival information is not very well accessible to, very, to a very wide range of people. By using the information technology, <coughs> also the archival information becomes, has the possibility and has the potential to become a very big and widespread and important part of the historical memory of mankind. We already had a lot of attempts to, um, to reach that goal or to go into that direction. There are already a lot of national archival portals. There are also a lot of portals uh, bearing content of a certain discipline. So perhaps some of you know the Monasterium project which is a portal which provides access to medieval charters. Uh, we also have portals providing genealogical data and all those things. But if they are not linked, they just have the half of the value. The information is restricted as it is in the physical archives. And Creating a project or a portal like the Archives Portal Europe with such a high approach of bringing together all the archival content of the document and to create one access point to this information is a, an, is a unique approach and a unique possibility to join. And now let's come back to the community of archivists and to the community also of country managers. Um, carrying out the project um, with, um, how shall I say, um, just, uh, uh, just according to some project plan is the one thing. But the other thing is, having strong personal and professional relationships across borders and disciplines. And that's one big aim of today's meeting, to set the fundament for creating a community dealing with the basic challenges of, uh, of the digital era in the archives.
What we need to is to discuss on a very broad base across the borders and the disciplines all the new questions we have, the challenges, but also the chances we face. This means to rethink a lot of basic conceptions. The basic conception of an archive at one place with one reading rooms and accessible just through the door of to the main entrance of the archive for the public, it's over. In the future, we will have many other ways into the archive. And this situation raises a lot of questions and challenges. And one archive alone will not be able to solve or to, to, to find the proper solutions for that situation. So it's really important to share the experiences but also the expertise across the borders. And that's why it's so important of uh, creating a community like the country managers. So, I really would like to encourage you to join in this team spirit. We need a team spirit. We all need to have a common vision. A vision where to go. I know we all have a lot to do in our archives, in our countries at home. We all have a lot of work to, to accomplish inside the archive. But please don't forget, um, creating a portal like the Archives Portal Europe is a unique chance. So, we should aim within the Archives Portal Europe, but generally, if we cooperate inside the archives, we should aim to expand the amount of partners taking part in the portal. A portal or an information resource is just as much as is the, is the more worth, the more content there is. So it's really, really important not having just national archives inside the portal. Okay, it's, it's a big challenge getting all the national archives into the portal itself, but we must not forget of all the other smaller archives, of private archives, municipality archives, ecclesiastical or church archives. I think it's as important as the national archives to give them the opportunity to get their content <coughs> without any complications and very easily into an online platform. Because mostly those archival holdings are not as well accessible as those of bigger archives. What we also have to think of is that creating the content for the portals is nothing that runs by itself. And there is a huge disbalance between the one group of archives who have the budget uh, to run a digitization uh, department in the in their the premises and but there is also another big, big group of, of archives inside Europe uh, that do not have the possibility to create content on a very wide range. And that's a big challenge we have to face. So we also need an exchange of experience and knowledge how to gain money for digitization projects. We need to have this, uh, uh, this continuous exchange too, because a portal without con a content is not as much worth as, as the other. And of course, one of the major challenges concerning uh, building portals or information resources in, in 
digital era is how to sustain it. So please be also aware of the fact that setting the fundament for the archives for to Europe is just a fundament. But with each building you build in your life, once you have built it, you have to run it. And you have to think about how to run it. So, setting up an Archives Portal Europe Foundation will be one of the major tasks of the project. But let's do not talk about the project. Let's talk about our community. It will be our major task in the community of the particip uh, participating national archives, all the other archives, to find ways to sustain this building we are setting the fundamentals now. And the other thing we should aim to and we really should stress is to strengthen the cooperation between us. So it will be important to keep up meetings like this here to keep in touch, to have this continuous exchange of knowledge and experiences. So, let's be aware of the fact that um, setting up a project like the Archives Portal Europe is nothing you can do every year or every two or three years. It's very, very hard work to apply for such a project. It's very, very hard work to write a project application, even if the Dutch colleagues really um, made a, some kind of miracle, because in three weeks setting up a project application like that uh, is, is nothing obvious. But of course, not only the Dutch colleagues, the lead of the Dutch college. So, uh, the existence of an Archives Portal Europe project is nothing obvious. It's hard work. And we really should be aware of the fact that now we are facing a unique chance. A unique chance, the first time in history, to create an information platform for all the archival information and content uh, which is held on the whole continent. And it opens so many new perspectives and possibilities which we now are not aware of. And I really would like to encourage you, don't miss that chance, let's take that chance. And so, Thank you very much for your attention. Well, looking at the time, we have still time for the coffee break. So, I'll have some questions for Thomas at this moment. I, I have not a question, but I would like to remark some point. Uh, Thomas, uh, uh, this uh, presentation and introduction of the programs of so Anna said that uh, two, two crucial points uh, mm -hmm. relevant points. One of the big archives, uh, big archives are very, very relevant. You can say necessary, obvious in a, such a project. But uh, I, I remember when uh, we met, uh, in, uh, if uh, Stella Montanari was wrong in uh, saying uh, 2005, but around, uh, but uh, what, mm, what uh, I focused on in this uh, new project, in this new approach, was uh, the relevance of the small archives. Not so, not easy to access. This is uh, uh, the second point of the presentation, Thomas. I would like to stress because I think many, many in uh, Europe there are many, many projects on archives, of 
course. But uh, it seems to me uh, the interest and the stress on uh, small and not, not easy to reach archives is a very relevant and characteristic point of uh, our project. And so I think uh, we have to try to increase, to develop uh, this special character of the project because uh, I think uh, it is something very specific of uh, an archive before Monasterium Icarus. Of course, in parallel with uh, big archives. This is my opinion that uh, our particular site should be still the, the care of the small archives, very, very relevant and not easy to access for many people. This is only I would like to stress in our history because if I remember you started just from small archives. Okay, we are a little bit running ahead on time, but due to the, to the, say, the design of the workshop of the museum, I think we have to start now at the coffee break first, and then with new energy, listen to the workshop of the museum. Okay, thank you. I apologize for many, many troubles, but this is the, not the normal room for conference and lecture, not at all. We have got permission to use it very late, and so many, many things uh, are not working. I am very sorry. But no. only to say, this is uh, called uh, Sade Listemi, that means all of the arts, because uh, this and the other outside are the arms of the noble family of Pisa, uh, giving the, the horsemen to, to protect uh, the trades, uh, the economic <laughs> richness. <laughs> of the Medici family, and this was the seat. Before, it was the seat of the elders' government of Pisa. Before, later, in the Renaissance, the, the, the seat of the elders. Mm. This is the old of the stands. The stands in Italian arts, of course. Thank you very much.